I mean, you know, starting with one of our earliest projects was a project we did in Coimbatore. Our office was only four years old and we got a major office building to do, which was surprising. This was a couple of years after India had liberalized its economy. Uh, and the first brief of the client was they wanted a glass seven story building. Uh, but what we landed up doing uh, was getting into conversations, understanding the client. We found that clients were deeply cultured, they, their understanding of Indian traditional art, of culture, of religion was incredibly deep. Uh, they were people who were straddling both the, um, the, you know, the Western and the Eastern world. It was a firm called Lakshmi Machine Works, which is a machine tool company, one of India's largest machine tool companies. And we landed up doing, when India was just opening up and everyone wanted glass and steel, we did a 20,000 square foot Mangalore tile roof with courtyard water bodies. And we, you know, got artists, we got, we had Manjeet Bhava, Rajiv Sethi took a lead, Yogesh Rawal, we had uh, the artists who decorate trucks from Kerala. I mean, we had a whole gamut of artists that worked with us on building elements. It was very unusual for the time because, uh, you know, the narrative was something else. Uh, but I think that came from understanding the client and their aspiration and making them see other ways that they could express that aspiration. More recently, we've been over the last 10 or 12 years doing a you know elephant village for Mahouts and it's a low cost housing project in Jaipur, which was very complex because that meant aligning the aspirations of the chief minister, you know, of uh, government agencies like the forest department, the public works department, and also the elephants and the Mahouts who, you know, this is low income housing because they earn not very much. Uh, and so therefore the challenge there was understanding each other's aspirations and getting all their aspirations on the same table. So there we privileged water, we privileged the landscape, we didn't privilege architecture because we felt the common ground would be achieved by creating an ecology where life like that can thrive. So the project then became for us more an imagination of an armature that would support life rather than fetishizing architecture for its own sake. I think Eros Cinema is a very important building and it's important for me, uh, not for the fact that it's an art deco or whatever, but for me, it's one of the most important urban gestures in Mumbai because it, it sits in a very, uh, very important junction across from Churchgate. It speaks to the Western Railway headquarters, which is a Gothic building because it also has a turret. So it's making architectural conversations with what's across it. But more importantly for me, it's urban because it has a theater in the center. It has shops wrapped around the theater. Uh, it has residences on the top. So it is three very disparate or four very disparate programs that all come together in one building and shops of different sizes, restaurants of different sizes, uh, residences of different sizes, offices of different sizes, as well as a massive theater. It becomes, I think, an important paradigm. Uh, the other building that stands out to me is Kanchanjunga, uh, and that stands out to me for two reasons, two or three reasons. Uh, one is that um, if Mumbai is locked into a high-rise uh, uh, paradigm, uh, then it's a very elegant way uh, to, as you know, Charles Correa himself called it, bungalows in the sky, that you can actually have habitation in, you know, even in a vertical way. And it was also important as an as a piece of architecture in terms of the collaboration between Shirish Patel, uh, Dr. Nori and Charles Correa, uh, because structurally also it's quite unique. It takes slip form technologies. It uh, you know has these massive cantilevered double height spaces. Uh, and so it kind of, it, it, it's a paradigm shift. And that's what makes actually good urban architecture because in the city, the forces that have to be resolved on limited amount of land are huge. Uh, and so through spatial imaginations, if one can fulfill many aspirations, many functions, yet creating a coherence in the architectural form, uh, then I think you begin to have great architecture. Actually, my work has influenced the books, not the other way around. For me, the books are more about uh, being engaged in certain kinds of work 
and then trying to make sense of what landscape should that work be situated in. So it was really the work uh, that one was doing to make sense of it and to contextualize it. One was almost doing research retrospectively. Of course, now some of it happened simultaneously and must have had an influence. And similarly, for me, architecture in India since 1990, I did that when our office was 20 years old. Uh, our office also started in 1990. Uh, so I said, look, you know, I've practiced for 20 years. Everything that's happened around me, I've, I know the architects, I've met them, I've talked to them. Uh, why don't I reflect on, it'll help me contextualize my work. And if I hadn't done uh, architecture in India since 1990, I could never have written working in Mumbai because that allowed me to place our own work in that broader context. So, so then one could reflect on 30 years um, you know, through the book working in Mumbai. Uh, and so each of these, let me say, research and writing trajectories actually have been triggered off by the work rather than the other way around. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.